All right, welcome to chapter eight, section four notes, the last notes of this chapter. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the double replacement reactions that we learned about the other day, and we're going to take them a step further. Now, what happens is when we take ionic compounds and we dump them into water, they will generally break up. They all dissolve to some degree. Some dissolve more than others. So if I dump some Ki into a beaker, and I dump some lead nitrate into a beaker, what I get, if you look down here, are all these ions floating around. Okay? Well, look at this reaction we have right here. Okay? This is the reaction. Notice that lead and iodine come together to make a solid. That solid, as you guys know, is a precipitate. That solid also happens to be this nice little yellow precipitate right here. It's really pretty cool. It's a lead iodide precipitate. Well, so these ions are all floating around, and a lead bumps into an iodide, and another iodide comes into contact, and you make this PbI2, all right? An insoluble compound floating around. So now we have our beaker, we have our precipitate, it starts to settle, and what's going on with the two other ions, the potassium and the nitrate? Well, they're still floating around. They're just floating around uh, doing nothing. We say they're spectating. So we call those the spectator ions. And what we're going to try and do is get to a point where we could put a couple ionic compounds together, predict who's the solid, and, and uh, write what's called a net ionic equation. And a net ionic equation includes only the ions that do the reacting, in this case, lead 2, and the 2 iodide to make lead 2 iodide. Okay? This is a net ionic equation, and it's the only thing that's really happening. So we're going to get to a point where we can write that out. Now, uh, before we do that, we've got to make sure that... Um, we can go ahead and write out exactly what ions are there. We've got to break them up. So you dump them in water, you stir, stir, stir. The water molecules attach to the ions, and it breaks up. So what do these guys break up, to, up into? Well, strontium nitrate is made up of a strontium, 2 plus, ion. And two, note the two right here, two nitrites, ions. Now, sometimes this messes people up because they go, wait a minute, I've got three things and it's making one. But remember, if you have a bicycle, you need two wheels and one frame to make a bike, so it's kind of similar. All right? What I want you to do is pause the video and try and break up cobalt-3-bromide. Try and break it up into the ions. Okay, hopefully you did that. Let's see what we got. Well, we've got cobalt uh, there's only one there. What's its charge? Well, we look to the anion. There's three bromides, and we know that bromide's always minus one, so this thing must be three plus. Okay? So we've got one cobalt and three Br minuses. Now, if any of you wrote something like this, Br3 minus, uh, I've got to tell you, there's no such thing. Okay? So. Um, We've got to tell how many ions, and we've got to represent the correct formula. Now, as you guys know, when we're balancing equations, we always use these coefficients. So let's make sure that we can keep track of the ions when there's a coefficient involved. So that this thing says I've got two potassium phosphates. So that breaks up into what? Well, six potassiums, right? Because we've got two times three right there. And two Phosphates, PO4 A minus. Okay? Pause the video, take a moment, try this beast right here. Titanium 3 permanganate. All right, let's see how you did. Okay? Now, I've got three titaniums right there, so I'll put three titanium. What's the charge? Well, permanganate, as you know, is minus one. And if it took three of them to make this a neutral compound, Titanium must be plus three. Okay, and then here's the big challenge. How many permanganates? MnO4 minus. Well, you've got three of these compounds, and there's three permanganates per formula unit, so that gives us nine. Okay? Hopefully you did that. This is a critical skill into doing the rest. So let's go over the steps it takes to write a net ionic equation. First thing we gotta do, we gotta balance it. So we look at this thing. Um, 
And this is going to be a lot easier eventually because we're going to learn our solubility rules. So you'll be able to figure out what the, uh, of the two uh, products, you're going to be able to figure out which one is the precipitate. But right now, we're going to let you know. So we'll learn those uh, solubility rules a little later. But um, the first thing we got to do is balance this thing. So look at that. Go ahead and balance it. You don't need to wait for me. Write this out. But I'll just balance it right now. Uh, I've got three chlorine here. I'm going to put a three right there. I've got three hydroxide there. I'm going to put a three right there. All right. So now we've got uh, a balanced equation. That's the key. Look at step two right here. Write the total ionic equation. What in the world is that? Well, we just broke up every compound into ions, and so we're going to do that right now. But we're going to do it for all of these things. So right down here, I've got three sodium ions, right? I've got three hydroxide ions. I've got one iron, three plus. Again, it's plus three because of the three chlorides. And I've got three Cl minuses. Okay, moving on. That forms three Na's, pluses, and three Cl minuses, and last but not least, look at this. This is a solid. So, is a solid broke up? Absolutely not. It's sitting in the beaker. As a matter of fact, it's settling to the bottom of the beaker right now. So, we don't break up solids, liquids, or gases. And so, there you have it. All right? So, that's what, uh, that's what my next slide shows. Let's go to that next slide with a little bit better writing. Okay, so you can see that is exactly what I just wrote. Now, let me ask you this. What ions are not changing between the reactant side and the product side? Okay, well, if you notice, up here we've got three sodium pluses and three sodium pluses. Those are the same. And I've got three chlorides and three chlorides. Okay, so those are our spectator ions in this reaction. Okay, now if we go back to our steps, the last step, find the net ionic equation, okay? Well, the net ionic equation includes all um, ions that are involved in making the precipitate, okay? So the net ionic equation, I take my three OHs, and I take my three iron, my, my iron three, and I write that out. So this is the net ionic equation, right? Hopefully this is making a little sense. Of course, we gotta try one. So take a moment, pause the video, see what you get, and then I'll do it for you. Okay, how did it work? Did you balance first? I hope you did, because that's the first thing we got to do, right? So I'm going to look at my polyatomic ions. I have three hydroxides there. I'm going to put a three right here. I've got three nitrates there. I'm going to put a three there. I'm going to check my Ks. Three Ks, three Ks, one Al, one Al. All right, that thing's balanced. So I've got my balanced reaction. What's the next step? Exactly break them up into the ions. So, here we go. I've got aluminum. As you guys know, it's got a three plus charge. I've got three nitrates, right? We see the three right there, three nitrates. I've got three potassium and three hydroxide. Okay, and that's gonna yield, look at this. This is a solid. Do I break up a solid? Absolutely not. It's sitting in the beaker, settling to the bottom. So I write out OH3. There's my aluminum hydroxide. And I've got three potassium and three nitrate. All right. Now, before we write the net ionic equation, what are the ions that aren't changing before and after? Well, one is potassium. Look at that. I've got three potassiums there, three potassiums there. Okay. What else? Nitrate. I've got three nitrates right there and three nitrates right there. Okay. So, and, and what I mean by who hasn't changed, over here, these ions are floating around, but over in this situation, they're in a precipitate, so they have changed. Okay. So now the last step is, let's write the net ionic equation. It only includes the ions that are involved in making the precipitate. So aluminum plus three hydroxides gives us aluminum hydroxide. All right. 
How's that? Is that what you got? I hope it is. Uh, if not, never fear. We got more practice. Okay? So I want you to pause the video, take a moment, do that one. All right. Time to see how you did. I did I'm not going to write this one out, but I've already got it all written out for you. So let's look at this thing. Okay? Hopefully, you got something like this. Well, I shouldn't say something. Now, hopefully, this is exactly what you got. Okay? Can't break up your solid right here, right? And this is one of the reactions you did in the uh, lab we did the other day. Okay? And then my question to you is, what are uh, the spectators? Right there, three sulfates stay the same. Six uh, sodium stay the same. Okay? So then... Now that I know the spectators, let's look exactly what um, the net ionic equation is. There you go. It is the ions that make up the precipitate. All right. Hopefully this is making sense. I know it's a challenge at first. If you don't get it, if you need more help, please come see me. And uh, good luck with this.